basements were also full of mud and water and sewage. So please, don't think that we don't suffer because we happen to live in that community. We suffer just like everybody else because we have not lost our town. And we're in a hell of an ugly position. A hell of an ugly position because we're told we're flood way, and the government says, oh, by the way, you're not gonna be able to get insured. Nobody's gonna be able to get a mortgage to buy your house. We better move now or else. So we feel like there's a gun put to our hand. Yeah. I'm not asking for your sympathy. What I'm asking is for you not to exonerate us because we have to live in a selfless part I don't town. think it's your choice. This has got nothing to do with your choice. It's an old map that was there before the burn. It was there before the river took different turns. It was there before we just spent a huge amount of money on a wonderful new study that they're going to look at again. Absolutely. But please understand please that we are also burned off first thing in the morning to save the rest of the community. And if you say the council doesn't know, I will tell you, at 10 after 8, I was standing on top of that burn beside the mayor and the councillor, one of the town councillors, and I said, that water's coming over, and he said, no, it's not, and he walked away. Well, I wasn't there. I know you weren't, but let me, let me just finish my story, all right? In all fairness, because we get slaughtered, and it's unfair. I will tell you that they stood beside me, and I watched that water surround that neighborhood by 8.30. And the first thing I did was get on the phone to my ex-husband in McLaughlin Meadows and I said, get the kids, get the hell out, the water is rushing down the streets. So don't tell me that nobody in this town knew that that water was coming. Thank you all for coming this evening. Please drop off your stories for us to be able to share with government.